Okay, so tell me, what are the top two metrics on every single car sold? Horsepower and torque. From your mom's Camry to an NHRA dragster to anything in between, just about all performance metrics hover around the horsepower and torque output of a car. So the higher the number, the better, right? Well, sure. I mean, not very often you hear someone say, man, I wish my car had less horsepower. But do you know the difference or which one is better? Well, let's dig a little deeper and find out. If you're new here, welcome to Ideal Cars. My name is Trav and this is Launch Control. Let's get into it. So before we get into which is better, we have to understand a bit about each metric. Both horsepower and torque are measuring devices for force and force is what makes your car move. But it isn't all that simple because Torque and horsepower go about force in different ways, as torque is quite literally the force and horsepower is the rate at which that force is done. I know this might all sound complicated, so let's break it down and talk about horsepower and torque separately so that you can understand how they each work and complement each other. Okay, so we know that torque is force and that's what it takes to move your car, but does that mean it's better than horsepower? Well, no, not exactly. See, a pound foot or foot pound are a common measurement of torque. And a pound is a measurement of force, but a pound is not a measurement of torque. Let's say you weigh 150 pounds, you know, just like I did before the pandemic. Now you are exerting 150 pounds of force on the earth, but you're not exerting 150 torques on the earth. I said torques, pretty sure it's a real word. You still do weigh 150 pounds, but your weight is not a measure of torque as torque, which is commonly measured in foot pounds measures in twisting force. And for cars, torque is the force produced by a car's rotating crankshaft or output shaft of an electric motor. If you're still lost, I'll break it down even further. Now, just imagine you're trying to tighten down a bolt. You wouldn't just drop 15 pounds on it to tighten it, but rather tighten it to 15 foot pounds. So imagine taking a wrench exactly one foot long and placing a 15 pound weight on the end of it to transform its static force or weight into twisting force. Well, that's how foot pounds or pound feet are actually measured. And that's exactly the force that's happening to the crankshaft inside your engine due to the combustion of each cylinder as your pistons are constantly rotating the crankshaft. So that's torque. But how does it relate to horsepower? Well, remember how I said torque is the force or the work and horsepower is the speed at which that force is being done or the speed at which that work can be applied. So the higher the horsepower figure, the quicker the torque is being applied. Put as simply as possible, horsepower is just torque over time. Imagine trying to push your project car that doesn't run, which I have to do all the time. When you push absolutely as hard as you can, well, that's like torque. Now, how quickly you can get it from the street and into your garage, well, that's horsepower. So let's think of torque as force and horsepower as, well, power. But the end result's the same. You still get from point A to B, doing it faster just required much more power, but basically the same amount of force. Simple, right? The thing is, in your car, the engine isn't splined directly to the wheels. The twisting force is transferred through a transmission first, and that transmission exists for one reason, to manipulate the twisting force or torque that's fed into it using gearing and output either a higher torque value, albeit at a slower speed, or a higher speed with reduced torque. And because cars have their power manipulated by gearing, what does that mean for horsepower and torque? Well, a car engine output can be measured on a graph produced by a dynamometer or dyno, and this is typically what they look like. As you can see, the maximum horsepower and torque values aren't produced throughout the whole rev range, but rather at specific points for a short period of time. This car looks like it's producing around 560 horsepower right at 6,400 RPM and hits right under 500 foot-pounds of torque for a good part of the middle of the rev range. But it does so in a very linear curve, so this car might be much faster or slower than another car putting down the same numbers, all depending on their gearing. Now the focus of this video is horsepower and torque, not gear ratios. I promise that film is coming in a few more weeks, but it's important to understand that in the lower gear ratios, while that engine is outputting around 500 foot-pounds of peak torque at the crankshaft, in say first gear, that number would be more like a whopping 2,000 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels, assuming a four to one gear ratio of first gear and say, roughly 411 final drive gear. We'll get into that later. It generally isn't until third or even fourth gear that wheel output horsepower and torque values more closely match the engine's actual output. That's just when the math comes together and essentially gets us pretty close to a one-to-one -one ratio at the wheels. It's a combination of gearing, which is why on a dyno, we run cars in third, 
fourth and sometimes fifth gear. Whichever one gets the wheel and engine RPM to match as closely as possible. Gearing, torque, and the horsepower together all make a difference with the acceleration and top speed of your car. So let's take this into the real world. Bugatti Chiron, couple million dollar machine. And real quick, if you dream of one day owning a car like that, you're going to need to be pretty financially savvy or just marry into a super rich family. But a great way to learn how to be smart with money is to go over to our other channel, Ideal Money, where we teach average Joes like you and me how to be smart with money so that one day we can drive our dream cars. But back to the Bugatti. It has 1,479 horsepower, 1,180 foot-pounds of torque, fitted with an all-wheel drive system to put that power down with basically no grip loss. So let's pair it up against something like a Porsche Taycan Turbo S. 750 horsepower, 774 foot-pounds of torque, also fitted with all-wheel drive. Now, the Bugatti's a hefty 4,300 pounds, and the Taycan's no featherweight either at a whopping 5,100 pounds. Both heavy cars, but the point is, there's an 800 pound weight difference between them. So which one would win in the sprint to 60 miles an hour? Clearly the Bugatti, right? Well, no, actually. You see, the Taycan Turbo S provides its peak 774 foot-pounds of torque at zero RPM because, well, that's how electric motors beat. And the Bugatti's power curve is a bit different. As you can see, its peak torque hits pretty quickly at about 2,000 RPM, but by that point, the Taycan is already gone. Now, the Bugatti certainly does reel the Taycan back in quickly thereafter, as its horsepower comes into play, which at that point, good luck catching it. The Taycan has a zero to 60 time of 2.4 seconds, but the Chiron does it in a slightly slower 2.5 seconds. So 0.1 seconds slower, even though it's substantially lighter and makes way more power. So as you can see, horsepower and torque aren't the only things that make a car fast. The power curve of the motor makes a huge difference, but clearly so does the gearing. And while a whole bunch of factors go into making a car fast, it's horsepower and torque that are touted by each and every manufacturer. Torque is the work, and horsepower is the rate at which the work is being done. While they both need each other to get a car to move, having a lot of one and not of the other doesn't always make your car quicker. And doing something as simple as changing the gear ratios might actually make a greater difference to the acceleration and top speed of your car, rather than just adding power or, or torque. Manufacturers, as of late, have struggled with keeping manual transmissions hitting emissions and fuel efficiency targets. Modern automatic transmissions often have seven or more gears, while almost all manuals have a maximum of six. Now, this video isn't at all about transmissions. That video is coming later in this series. The point I'm trying to make here is that you can have two of the same car, one with an automatic transmission and one that's a stick. Yes, auto shift quicker than manuals these days, but the difference in zero to 60 on some of these cars can't be explained just by a slightly slower shift time of typically only one shift in the sprint to 60. Two cars, same engine, horsepower and torque, nearly identical weight. If it's not just shift speed, well, how the hell are autos laying the smack down on all of our beloved manuals? Gearing. The more gears you have, the more of the time you can keep the engine in that sweet spot of where horsepower and torque collide. Jason Camisa just launched a video talking all about it on Hagerty's channel go check it out. Clearly there's more to making your car fast than just having more power. And while this video pits horsepower and torque against each other, as far as which one is best? Well, neither, or actually both. It depends on the use case and how you'd like the car to drive. Take for example, a semi truck, huge amount of torque, but a rev limit of like 3000 RPM. So insanely capable at getting literally tons of work done, not so capable at getting that work done quickly. You feel me? Horsepower, torque, which is better? All of the above. There we have it, boys and girls. Let me know what you learned in the comments down below. If you could, what would you prefer to add to your car? Horsepower or torque? Do you love that immediate grunt from a low RPM? Or do you sort of prefer that feeling that builds and builds as you reach redline? I wanna know. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And as Brad always says, keep on living the ideal lifestyle.